So hello everyone, welcome back to Zdenek's English podcast and here is a new episode for you and this time I am joined by Jason Levine aka Fluency MC who is a bit of a legend of an English teacher. Hi Jason, how are you? Hello Zdenek, how are you? I'm great, good to have you here Jason. Well, thank you for having me here, it's a pleasure. Yeah, the pleasure is all mine to be honest. <laughs> I've been a big fan for a long time. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I know long time because I'm an old man. I understand. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but thank you very much. I'm, I'm I'm glad you know I've followed you in social media for uh, a number of years now. Uh, so it's nice to finally um, meet each other like this. It's great. <laughs> I'm a bit starstruck. I have to say. <laughs> oh. I, I think you know the 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 reason for this is because I. When, when did I start teaching English? I think it was back in 2011 after I graduated from the university. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when you came up with, with your with your famous uh, rap tune, Stick Stuck Stuck, but that was the one that I think every English, almost every English teachers, uh, every English teacher remembers, right? So, <laughs> well, well, it's interesting you... that year that you brought up 2011, um, because that was the year that I, I published the video. Yeah. There Same year. But um, in fact, I wrote the song and started doing it with my students uh, along with other songs uh, in 2007. I see. So that, that was the first song that uh, I wrote and used with students. So it also happened to be the first one and the only one that got, you know, that went viral on YouTube. But that was four years later. So for four years, uh, I used songs on CDs to help my students practice. So it, the, the idea was ne wasn't was then or now uh, mm -hmm. to rap in class. We made a video, I made a video uh, in the classroom to share it so other people at home could practice with the song. But uh, my classes were never about rapping. It was a flip classroom model where the flip was the songs that the students listen to and practice with outside of class. So when they came to class, oh, I can remember that irregular verb or I can remember yeah. this collocation, right? So that was always the the point was to do it, uh, not in the classroom, but but outside. The way we usually listen to music, it's not in the classroom usually, it's, you know, outside the classroom. Yeah, well, for me, it was that moment, you know, like as, as, a, as a novice teacher, you're trying to kind of find your find your feet right you, uh -huh. you everything is new to you and you learn some theory at school but you don't have that much practical experience teaching mm. and and at the same time you have this this these fresh ideas from school and you you have you know you, you feel like you're gonna make the world a better place and you're gonna bring something new to the english teaching world mm. and, and and seeing what you did at the time uh it's this 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 can be very inspiring for for a new English teacher, you know. So I think that uh, you were one of the teachers that I saw. Of course, then Luke was another one. Aha, yes, and that's and how then, I met you. I think was comments you made on Facebook following yeah. Luke. Um, and yeah, that's 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 really cool. So it's been it's been a long time now. <laughs> we've we've known each other. Yeah, that, like I had I had been a, a follower of Luke's English podcast for a long time and mm. then you appeared on Luke's English podcast once <laughs> yeah that was episode 253 and that was like so cool for me which shows uh, how long Luke's been at it <laughs> shout, shout out to Luke uh yeah. who's also in in Paris as exactly. far as I know unless he's left now I think exactly he's you're both living in France in yeah. in Paris right yeah. yeah yes but but you're originally from the United States yes right? yes Yes, originally, but I've lived, been living in Paris with my family for almost nine years now. Okay, so what's it like? Yeah. It's great. I mean, I've, I'm. It's it's nice to visit the U.S., but I don't ever plan on living there again. So mm -hmm. it's I'm much more comfortable here. I feel at home sure. in France. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's great that you came out of uh, the theory of language teaching, uh, feeling like you wanted to do something. To make an impact so it's it's not surprising it'd be great if every teacher felt that way so it's not surprising that you're doing uh your own stuff like through games through through football it's um yeah it's it's great so you, you may have been inspired by people like me but you're certainly inspiring other people now so that's that's fantastic well i hope so thanks thanks very much for saying that i mean i've always had this 
creativity knack in me, you know, like it's it's in us, right? Some people have it more, some people less. It doesn't mean that we are necessarily better or worse English teachers, mm. but everyone is different. Everyone has a different personality as a teacher. That's and right. for me, I have to tell you something like if I don't if I don't have the opportunity to to just sort of um be myself yeah, and be authentic and uh, have that freedom to be creative. I don't necessarily enjoy my job that much. Yeah, but well, you shouldn't. We shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> because then, I mean, are students going to learn and enjoy if, if we're not feeling like that about it? I don't think so. But everyone is different. Yeah, Some people are happy just following the book and tick all the boxes and, you know, doing the cur curriculum and all that. For me, That's it's true. like... I need I need something more, you know. Yeah, it's not you know, yeah. it's not enough for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that separates the. I mean, I think in that in that I'll say good teachers from the bad. But I mean, I'm thinking of of that area of you know creativity and feeling interested and connected. It's, it's a very broad area, so you can come at it with a different type of personality or a different approach. But if if you're not if you're not into learning as a teacher and creating and learning, then Hmm. I wonder if that's you're really <laughs> in the right profession, but anyway. Yeah. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say so. I think it's you can be a great teacher even if you're not that creative and you just do the, the things right, right. Mm. Yeah. But it's just I, I'm happy to be like this, you know. And I, yeah, I think yeah. in that from from that perspective, we could be on the same wavelength, mm. let's say. Oh yeah, I think so. I think Although so. I would say it's a bit pretentious of me to, to compare myself. Do no, you? well, I've, I've just yeah. been doing it longer. When when you started teaching, you said 2011. Yeah, I, I'd yeah. already been teaching for 14 years at that time. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got 14 years on you. So in 14 years, I have a feeling uh, you'll you'll probably be way way beyond where you are. Uh, I, I I doubt it, but thank you very much. <laughs> you're, you're, very, you're very generous in saying that. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we should say we should say that you popularized rap as a tool for learning english or is it that you popularized english through rap like which one is it then <laughs> hi i'm nadia and i like the achievers chamber because it's an amazing place to meet different people from around the world and um, it's like traveling for more information about the achievers chamber go to teachersthenec.com I mean, I guess this video a little of both. I mean, certainly uh, using music in the classroom uh, to help students learn and remember, especially remember um, language. I mean, that goes back to the beginning of learning any language uh, for sure. And so like most teachers, I was using songs in the classroom. Uh, but I, you know, I had this had this uh, this challenge. Well, just problem basically, which was I was teaching, you know, uh, adolescents and young adults in New York City come from all over the world um, and are together in the classroom. You know, songs from textbooks were definitely not going to work uh, because they were kind of silly, childish, um, bad music, even if the content might be okay uh and then on the other the other extreme was pop songs which are cool in the sense that like you know students can get interested in, in the meanings of the songs and the cultural sides of it um you can pull out language from yeah. them uh but what frustrated me was that i wanted you know songs that had you know all the target language for the activities yeah. they needed and the things they needed to do, like take tests, have job interviews, you know, uh, uh, meet people, uh, uh, just, you know, everyday sort of functional language they needed. And, you know, it was either in those textbook songs that nobody wanted to listen to, yeah. uh, but sometimes not even. And then the pop songs, it's kind of hit and miss, right? Um, mm -hmm. So much language could be low frequencies, idiomatic in a way that they didn't really need it yeah uh so anyway that that's how i hit on the idea of 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 creating my own songs uh so i could be the one you know i'm a big corpus linguistics guy so for me it was you know, it's all about like what are the most common collocations my students needed uh, you know um and wow i can create songs sort of for their level their interests and i i was a 
I was and still am. Uh, I mean, I still call myself a DJ. I mean, I make beats. Um, I wasn't a rapper, but I grew up mm -hmm. with hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. So I decided, hey, I'm, I can I can write write a song, I can write a rap, I can make the music, um, and yeah, that's what I did. And as I said earlier, uh, it wasn't and still isn't about teaching through music. It's more songs that students can use to you know relax, repeat, remember the three R's, come into class or go out in the world and have the language there more more accessibly because music helps you remember retain and retrieve language so much better than pretty much anything else games another one <laughs> <laughs> games and songs seems like we are on the same way wavelength yeah I'm... and if you combine them which i do then you can really hmm. really make thought, an impact. as an english teacher I'm, i'm not i'm not like as good as other teachers when it comes to music like you or luke and there are a lot of teachers like rob from Uh, English with Rob. Oh yeah, um, love Rob's and plus he's in a, makes amazing videos as well. Okay. So he's got a exactly. lot of different skills, Rob. Exactly. But what I want to say is, unfortunately, I don't have those those uh, skills as a musician, and I'm just whenever I were to sing, mm. I would be out of tune and all that. So I, that's not my expertise, and that's 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 fine, right? But absolutely. Uh, but I did I did create a rap tune inspired by, by that episode you recorded with Luke. Um, I, I seem to remember that now that you mention it. Um, did you ever perform it? Have I heard it? I feel no. like I, no. Okay. <laughs> well, I I did record it as a YouTube video, but I, it it was just a that like a static picture. I never and with with the lyrics okay. on the on the screen. Like I never really. It was difficult for me to even even record it. Yeah, uh -huh. there were a, lot, a lot of takes, but but it yeah. is one of my uh, best performing videos, nevertheless. And I cool. did actually mention you there. I did mention you there. I feel like I, so. Have I anyway? I've got to send me the link later, man. Uh, okay, so it's it's called conditional rant, and and it was it was a way to teach conditionals. It sounds familiar. And man. it was I very long. I made it very very long. Like I broke. I must have broken all all the, all the rules of uh, writing a successful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was years ago when I met Luke and did that. Uh, so I, I think that's the reason I don't remember it well, but it sounds, if I think, I think you sent a link and I, I, I checked it out. So yeah, I'll definitely have to look at that again. I'm going to put the link in the description of this episode. Yeah. As well. I was okay, just trying to have a little bit of fun by inspired by you. And I know Luke created one as well, which was sort of like okay. in, in, for that particular episode with you. And if I'm going to, I'm going to read out, uh, uh, two, a uh, few lines from that, but where I'm mentioning you. Yeah. So okay. I said. I got inspired when I listened to Lab, Luke's English podcast on the internet. It's a cracking show. It's a real treat. I'd be surprised if you didn't know it. Episode 253, a cool <laughs> interview with Fluency MC. Luke at his best and his big cheese guest. Two aces meet up. You can work out the rest. So that, <laughs> that's the nice, part. Got a few nice rhymes in there, man. That's the that that's was the part of my long-winded introduction. It okay. took me about two minutes to before I started oh, yeah. teaching those conditionals, and I had to do all like disclaimers first that I can't. It's just an experiment. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I can't do this. And then yeah. I was like, I <laughs> I feel like I have to mention you guys because it's not my idea at all. Like, I, you uh, know. I, so I mentioned you. You know, so <laughs> I felt it's, guilty. It, sound, it sounds familiar, man. I'm just I'm, I'm getting old, man. Is what it is. I can't, <laughs> I can't remember. I have too, too too many songs in my head now. Is the other problem? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Cool. Uh, okay, so um, um, so I I thought we could talk on this podcast about the idea of learning should be fun, you know. Um, learning should be fun. I think that's that's like the main message. That's that's how mm. I would like to perhaps name this episode. Mm. And I, I'm sure we are on the same wavelength when it comes to this. Um, I just want to say at this point that fun is not the same as funny, listeners. Mm. Fun means enjoyable. You need to enjoy yourself. Funny is like you're you're, you're just laughing at a joke. Yeah. So that's not yeah. what we what we mean. It can be <laughs> right. funny as well, of course. But the main thing is fun. That's that's the important thing. So mm. would you agree that that's like a crucial, crucial sort of uh, condition? 
Um, I mean, I, I would go further and say they're kind of inextricably linked. I mean, I think the word fun puts people off sometimes. Like they yeah. think it's, it means like, you know, not serious or something. Exactly. But then when you think about what you said, it means enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, and what does enjoy mean? I mean, can you be engaged? Because I think we have to all agree. If you're not engaged, you're not going to learn. Your, you know, your, yeah. your brain has to be engaged, your attention engaged. Can you be engaged and not enjoy something? I guess if your extrinsic motivation is strong enough, like I have to get a good grade on this test tomorrow or yeah. I'm being paid to learn this information or something like that. Maybe. Okay, yeah. maybe. Uh, but those are kind of extreme situations. Um, the test one, not so much, but I would argue that even if you're doing something just to do well on a test, if you're also not enjoying that process, it's going to be really painful and you probably won't remember it later because you'll be so stressed uh, yeah. and, and, and so motivated just by the extrinsic factors. So, yeah, I mean, I think if we're talking about general learning, um, it's it, to be engaged, you have to enjoy, you have to learn through pleasure or you're not exactly. going to learn as much. You're not going to, you know, what we learn with pleasure, we never forget. So what we learn without pleasure, we probably won't remember, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think words like with, with fun, you know, it's enjoyment, um, uh, pleasure, um, uh, engagement, attention. Uh, I think also, uh, relax, relaxation, you know? Uh, I mean, it's hard to imagine being relaxed when you're learning something and not enjoying it or vice versa. So I think, you know, uh, these things all go together. And then yeah. what does it mean to have fun when you learn? It means so many different things. You mentioned before, like different teaching styles, different approaches. I mean, there there isn't one, one way yeah. <laughs> or four ways or 10 ways to, you know, uh, get that kind of outcome for the, you know, with uh, that build that kind of relationship with students and, and have the outcome where they're learning through, through pleasure. I think they're it, it, the key thing, especially is who are your learners? Yeah. Uh, you well, know, you're what, looking at it from the point of view of the teacher, but I think even the, the students and learners, English learners often, I, I, I teach adults mostly. Yeah? So they should also approach it from this angle and they should always search for these opportunities for these little opportunities and work with teachers like that who can who can make that happen yeah so i, I think um, i think they should but i'm definitely more on the side of it's on it's on the teacher just just because i've seen in my in my uh 23 years of teaching or maybe it's 24 many situations where i'll have a group of students who are not thinking that way but i can get them thinking that way Mm -hmm. As opposed to, you know, can students who think that way get a teacher <laughs> to think that way? I mean, it's possible, but I really feel like, you know, the whole idea of all oh, the students don't care, the students are bored, what's the problem with this group? What's, you know, I, I think it's very rare when it's no, like that I, I agree with situation. You, that, you know, it's I more agree with you. that students, unfortunately, whether they've been, you know, kind of conditioned to not think outside the box or they've had too many uninspired and uninspiring teachers yeah. but um you know um i'm not I saying that's what you meant but i think if you know what i mean like i, think, I do i do yeah, yeah. I, I think it's definitely the responsibility of the teacher but then again like yes when you are uh, uh, in a in an elementary school or high school then it's difficult you can't change your teacher or anything like that mm. yeah but 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 you can follow teachers online and uh, once you once you reach adulthood it is up to you who you follow and who, who, who maybe who you pay for as your private teacher or who you mm -hmm. work with mm -hmm. and and that's that's where you should look, look for teachers like that teachers who can make it fun for you and i i think sometimes it is that, that the learners they 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 perhaps because of some stereotypes they don't allow themselves Mm. To, to to have that maybe that's it's it's too much of luxury or they just simply don't believe they they think mm. they they have this uh, the, the, this idea d deeply rooted in their head that learning has has to be serious right so <laughs> yeah. no no you're laughing but i think it's it is no it i think is, absolutely it's it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a change in in a shift in the, i mean part of it is it could be cultural part of it could be yep. uh their individual personalities 
but yeah, I think I think you know, seriously fun, you know, like is is, is important. Like you know, what I mean, again, pleasure. You know, I mean, I don't. It, it, fun is a like I said, it's kind of a loaded term. Yeah. But I mean, serious is it serious or pleasurable? I'd have a really hard time with someone that was going to argue that it shouldn't be pleasurable. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, exactly. I mean, like, would, like, give you an example. So I, 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 when I make a course, I've got a course called English through role plays. So you can yeah. have role plays that you like almost every ESL book these days, almost every single course book has role plays in them in one way, shape or form. Mm. But like when I design my role plays, I, I try to add some extra elements of, of fun into it. Like I, mm. I come, come up with really crazy situations mm. and and uh, 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 just something that, that makes you laugh and makes you enjoy yourself. Whereas sometimes when it comes to role plays in those course books, they are kind of bland. Oh That's, my God. It's like your, your, your generic, oh, um, make a phone call and order a meal or something. And, yeah. you know, like, okay, fine. Like, it, 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 okay, it's authentic. You probably need that language. You need to learn that language. But I can do the same. Mm. And, and, and um, part of that, Role play is that once you order that meal, you find you find a worm, a worm in your meal or something, right. And, right. and and you go crazy and 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 the person who sold you the pizza with the worm um, will argue uh, that, that 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 it's supposed to be there. Whatever you know, like make it fun. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Of course, of course. And again, there's so many ways to make something like that fun. One is what you're talking about, which is great, and have the students also create like you know funny situations. Uh, of course, another is uh, just I'm just thinking of something. Uh, one example maybe of something that we wouldn't say think about as fun, but could be then pleasurable, enjoyable, but still serious. You do some kind of like you know like the speed dating thing, like you're talking yeah. across with somebody, and then you switch. You have a new topic. You have to call and do something else. Then you switch. You have to call someone else. Like, it's it's not funny fun. Like what you're talking about is kind of more funny fun in a good way, right? But it's if you feel like, oh, this is interesting. I'm engaged. I'm enjoying myself. Then that's fun. Well, what I would do, like I've got I've got a speed dating role play as well. And what I would mm. do is, I've, of course, when you give a, a, the role card to a, the student, I would put there something crazy. The person is crazy. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes it, it may go a little bit too far. You know, it may break some rules of parsnip. You know, you know parsnip. Like yeah. there might be some politics involved in it, or 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 I don't yeah, but know. That's why you have your own classroom. You're not making a textbook. That's what you have. The, yeah. the I'm always trying to be respectful. Like that. That's well, that's yeah. one of my main like principles. But at the same time, like okay, so what, someone is crazy in the role play, or yeah. I don't know. <laughs> But it's also knowing your students. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you can you can switch it up, and you should switch it up depending on who's there and what's going on, and even just that day, what their mood is like, and what they seem, what, what is going to be pleasurable, you know, whatever that is. I think that's so important. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think like anything challenging in life we do in general, we we should find like almost like a hack. You know, to make, right. it, to make it enjoyable. Like when I, even when I remember, like when I uh, wrote my master's thesis at university, uh, that's just one of the most tedious things to do. Mm. And it's just, just imagining having to write it. It, it often put, puts people off, yeah. And you procrastinate, and it's just, just hearing a, you talk about it. It's a nightmare, man. It can be a nightmare. Like writing a long thesis, like so many pages. It's just ah. Uh, but like, for example, I wrote it about English football commentaries. I just love football. You know, I love football. So just find a way to do it. You know, mm. there's, there's always a way. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm talking just, just this morning with my, my university students who need to do presentations to practice English. And it's like, you know, it just amazes me that, that some teachers and some students, but again, I feel like you could get the students to kind of switch how they're thinking think a presentation is this thing oh i gotta do this presentation and go do research on my topic and then it makes no sense like here's an opportunity where you know i mean i can understand if we dictate you have to do this <laughs> topic or something but they don't they can choose so it's like come on guys if you can choose i mean within like science and tech technology these are engineering students but that's what they like they like science and technology so yeah. it's like why would why wouldn't you 
like find something that you're going to be so excited to exactly. and learn right. about. And, and I, but I finally realized after screwing this up, the, the way to do it, they, they need me to get them into that way of thinking. So I guess this is a good example of what you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Like it is about you know, mindset. It is about it's mindset. A mindset like, thing. And it it's, is. And these are, you know, these are young uh, French kids. So it's, it's not like, I mean, I don't know what your stereotype is of young French kids, but you know, you would <laughs> eat mean, frogs. All of them. Yeah, but yeah, but the, you know, you would you wouldn't think they'd be so you know kind of narrow minded in their thinking about this, but they are. And then it's kind of mm. like, oh wow, you know, I could talk about this and that, and yeah. I could you know, so. But it takes it takes time to get them thinking that way about it. It could be because they just their experience of learning English has been mm. different up yeah. to that point, you know. And it but just, it's not just English. I would have to say without yeah. without digressing too much in just interesting topic. I think it's just a more like formalized education system too. Like you know, yeah. uh, it's it's more rigid than you might think. Uh, if you look at like sort of pop popular French culture, you wouldn't see how rigid the educational can, system is. So, I can I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in yeah. Europe in general, uh, I think. Uh, well, the main thing is if there is an outcome, if there is a there's a there's a result. If you have results with your students, mm. isn't that what ultimately matters? Yeah, you know the. the yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but and they get really into the presentation now that I've sort of figured out the the, yeah. the way to reach them about it. Then it becomes fun for them. Absolutely, the end justifies the means. You know, yeah. like presentations. You know, pick pick your favorite PC game or whatever. Like, yeah, it's... yeah, or like, or like, you know, uh, oh, so it's it's about science and technology. We can't do it about football or music. Well, of course you can do. There's no technology in football. There's technology. You know? Are you kidding? Everything. <laughs> There's no technology in music, right? Exactly. I mean, there are no innovations uh, in these areas. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we could look into like algorithms of streaming and how they engineer. Well, yeah, that's right. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Yes. So, so I think you are an embodiment of this of this mindset with your <laughs> with your ideas. And so, so you started with stick stuck stuck, and what? So what's what's new in store for Jason these days? What 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 well, are your I mean, what's, latest? What's, <laughs> songs, I mean, so. I still I make songs for for publishers and videos and things. So I sort of you know do things uh, uh, that way. Like I'm sort of uh, for hire kind of projects, songs and, and, and videos here and there. Um, I'm a co-founder of an app called Relevant, which is uh, really excited about. Which I'm focusing a lot uh, most of my time on now. Um, when I'm not in the classroom teaching. Um, and Relevant, <clears throat> it's an opportunity for people to build skills uh, on, in an online, a global online community, whether it's English skills or preparing for interviews or uh, in the future, things more outside English. You know, you could imagine you want to learn uh, ukulele. You could, you could learn it at Relevant. So uh, they're online courses. We deliver what we call them climbs. So they're, they're short, uh, you know, uh, very targeted on certain skills to learn and one week, two weeks in a, what we call a tribe. So you're in like a cohort of 15 people mm -hmm. who are all uh, have the same goal uh, yeah. to learn that skill. So I have a, a climb there called you can tell your story, which is based on an audio book I wrote. So we use the book. To What's the name of the book? Tell us the, the name book. of the book, Jason. It's called one day. One day. Yeah, it's about a day in the life of uh, a person living and working in a city. Mm -hmm. So it's very uh, general, I think in a good sense, like it could be anybody kind of thing. Uh, but what it does is each chapter has a different situation, business, English, a lot of it, because the person works at a company. Uh, and the idea is for the student to use that language as a springboard to talk about themselves. So to read the book and listen, uh, reading and listening at the same time is hugely powerful. It's why songs, one of the reasons why songs with lyrics yeah. work so well to remember language, uh, movies with subtitles. Uh, so it's really important when you think about it, it's very obvious. You, you know, if you just learn by listening, you're not seeing all the little grammar words. So it's, you know, uh, but when you're just reading, you're not getting the listening, but when you do them together, especially in a language like English, where the sound spelling relationship is, you know, often mm -hmm. all That's over true. the place. That is true. Yeah, it's different mm -hmm. in a language like Japanese or or Spanish or something, right? Uh, where you learn you learn the letter, you learn the sound. Pretty yeah. much. Um, that's right. So yeah, so that's so. But now I'm not focusing as much on this climb as much as now that I'm a co-founder, like br bringing more people in to make climbs. Uh, 
And I had an idea since you asked me what's new. Uh, my most recent idea, as in like two days ago, and you're the first person I'm I'm talking about it to. Oh yes, uh, I feel special now. <laughs> well, yeah, this is. I really want your opinion about this. Like it, it, it kind of hit me. There was a kind of epiphany. Uh, so one thing maybe promising about this idea, we'll see if it might fall flat right here if you don't like it. But you oh, know, no. so often the best ideas right happen just like that. Like you just you know, they, it wasn't something I brainstormed. So I was teaching uh, an online uh, TOEFL class. Mm -hmm. uh, with at a university, so we have some in class. Uh, these are students going abroad in in Paris, uh, so it's mostly TOEIC here. But in this case, it's TOEFL uh, because they're going abroad. So uh, yeah. I was teaching, but we we sometimes do in in person classes and some online. Uh, so they have really nice facilities there, and I have a small apartment, so I I I'm doing my online classes there. So I have an empty classroom, right? <laughs> And I'm doing them there just because I have more space and right. It's just a better environment for me to do it. So they're at home uh, or wherever. Well, wherever it turns out, I just started this job. So it's new. wherever it turns out to be a lot of them in classrooms in the school like me. So like they're, they're doing the class online, but they're actually really close by. <laughs> like I see them in the hallway. Oh my God. You know, and then, then I see them online. I right? said, so it's, it's interesting. I've never been in that. I've been in many online teaching situations, but not that one. So in this particular case on Friday, mm -hmm. uh, I was teaching the class and uh, actually before I started teaching the class, some students came and they wanted to use the room. And we realized, because it's a new class, they, they're like, oh, I, you're my teacher. Like they were coming into my room, classroom. Yeah. And they're like, oh, so that won't work. I was like, no, it's fine. You know, I'll be in this corner. <laughs> they were in that corner. Everybody else is wherever, right? So they're actually watching online, but they're also looking up and seeing me. <laughs> That's crazy. So you it are in the same room. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Let me see if I understand it clearly. So in the same room. Yeah. <laughs> but you, 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 you are conducting the lesson. Online. So like in my online. camera, it looks like this with the wall in back of me. That is so 21st century, man. <laughs> well, and they were over there. Yeah. Right? So they nobody could see them, right? Yeah. But they they were watching on the screen, not me, because it was TOEFL. Also, the test prep thing is really important here. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like the class was very much like me, questions, answers. What do you guys think? How many people think it's C? Like I do it very gamified, you know, or like, you know, with 10 yeah. seconds. How many people want to change it? Like make it into the, a kind of game all the time with the answers. And so they were very focused here, not on me, but sometimes they I would look up and I'd catch them looking at me, right? Yeah. And what I saw in their eyes, whether it's real or I'm just projecting this, and I have to ask them, uh, was it was really intense for them, like the experience of being here in the room. Like mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, all of a sudden I'm thinking, well, yeah, TV audiences, man. <laughs> right? Like, you know, when you do like a cooking show yeah. and they're live people there right or you do like a comedy show there are live people there but everybody else is watching mm -hmm. right and then, then the other thing was most important element here i think is that at a couple points people online knew they were there and like i showed the camera for a second again like studio audience so it's like they're on tv yeah and i'm thinking i should freaking stream classes like this with a live audience i should have a class with my students yeah but then I should stream to the world and make a test prep, TOEFL, TOEIC, uh, GMAT. I do all of them, SAT, IELTS. If I did test prep like, like that with a group in the uh, – so I'm, I'm talking to people in the audience. Yeah. They're saying things live, camera sometimes on them, bouncing back to me, bouncing back off to online, and people are commenting in the chat. That could be pretty, pretty intense test prep. No, I, lo I love it. I mean, it's, it's, it, it makes total sense to me. Like, the thing is, like, I understand why they were looking up, looking at you and just, you know, the thing is, no matter what you say, like, uh, if you only do classes online, there's something you're missing. Mm. There's something in the face-to-face -face teaching. Like, right. I'm, all, I'm all, all up for online teaching. I do it yeah. now. But there, there are a lot of benefits to it. Like it's so convenient yeah. and and you have like the dictionary disposal. You can search everything immediately, which is cool for both students and the teacher. There are so many advantages to it. But then again, there's something you're missing, right? That's the element of 
That well, teacher right, but here's, here's here's what I'm going to come in and say. This is from this except this is my this is my uh, uh, the conclusion I'm drawing from this experience. And I've thought about this in term, other times in the past, like having a TV show with an audience. But but here's the thing about online teaching. You know, would you would you want to watch a late show with a with a comedian with no audience there? Like you want yeah. the audience there. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm saying is, I'm not saying it's uh, we're not comparing. Okay is in person better than online i'm talking about if you're gonna have online <laughs> no i, wouldn't I, I, you I rather I, right wouldn't you rather have people there you're not there i totally understand i wanted to get uh, to it yeah like yeah. experience yeah right you, yeah. that's what the people elements missing so if you're not there but the people who are there like those two those three students who were like Whoa, he's there, but he's teaching it's like that, yeah. that's what you it, feel like if you're in the studio but then the people watching you're not there physically, but you feel much more of an in-person experience if there are people there. Do, do you know what? People. Like now that now that you said that, I, I have already been kind of doing it, but that's not exactly the same. Like I have a Discord group for English learners, and sometimes I record our events or lessons that we have. Yeah. And and for other members who are not there, it's not yeah. exactly the same, right? It's a little bit though. Definitely not the same because it's it's all online. But right. like the idea is there and 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 yeah, it is cool. As you said, you're comparing it to a comedian, like a stand-up comedian mm. doing a show. There's a live audience. The camera uh, uh, shows the people that are there. Mm. So look, I can I can see it, see this work actually. Yeah, because first of all, it's very innovative. So it's it's new, and nobody has done it before. I think, and I don't know about anyone like that. And and secondly, it, it is it is it must be cool. And like if you if you could as a student experience both, that would be ideal. Like if you could sometimes be one of those students in your well, real yeah, life. You could try, but the, the thing is, I've I've yep. I, I've seen how many different shows that I love with audiences. I've never been live to one of those, and that's but okay. You, like, you, you, love, know, I mean, you know what I mean? You would I love to be there. Great. You it would love to be great. there, right? If I could, but the thing is, yeah. you don't feel like you have to be there to. Yeah. Have the I don't feel like oh my god you know uh, David Letterman or Saturday Night Live or something I've never been there so I can't really enjoy it that's ridiculous yeah. it, you know so that that would be the point so I'm so thinking if, man I'm mm. thinking Twitch I'm thinking so Twitch I, I'm thinking about streaming on Twitch man you freaking turn no, it, it on it, and it would it I would am. work like the only thing yeah the only thing that would be like maybe like to play devil's advocate. But, I know some I know some students, yeah, who are not comfortable when they are recorded. Like because it is it is a, they are in a vulnerable position. I know you are the kind of teacher and I know yeah. it about you. You can you can make everyone feel comfortable when they are learning. Like I try to be like that as well and it's one of my like key principles to teaching. Mm. I do what I can, yeah. you know, to make to make the students. But then you will always have someone who is like who who's going to feel threatened or self-conscious or something mm. like that and when you are because they are in that vulnerable position learning the well, language they be there. making they mistakes be there. But the, so but you the, have a choice you would you you could choose to be there or of not course, right? man, yeah. of course like the studio audience no 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 no, no. it would be the yeah. people who want to be there plus we who, yeah. who do you if you're watching from home you want the students that are going to be animated and want to be there and like no exactly yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking I don't exactly. Know. That's what I do. That's what I do in my Discord group. Like, if there's someone like that doesn't like to be recorded, I say, "Fair enough. Hey, you're joining. I'm. I don't have to record this this time. You know." Yeah. I, but but, yeah. but what I'm talking about too is I'm not talking about cameras and mics on. No, I'm talking about Twitch chat. But I've got cameras yeah. in a room with live students. No, you see what I'm saying? I mean, if you imagine, if you imagine like the late night show with Jimmy Kimmel or whatever is popular now, with people coming in online with their cameras and microphones, are you crazy? <laughs> we're, you know, we're, we're, that's not what happens, right? You get a chat going, but then you have real people who are doing stuff. Uh, you know, cooking oh, show so where people people could turn on their cameras. You say, this is my kitchen. Can you help me? I can't really figure out. You know, that wouldn't right. happen. No, it's it's it sounds like fun. You should you should definitely do it. I, I, I mean, I, I feel like that's what I'm. It's, it seems like the, I'm, the right thing listen, to do. Man, I'm already <laughs> thinking of stuff like I, I checked the Guinness Book of Records for the longest ever class because <laughs> I'm thinking, man, if I did this, I could just be like turn on the TV. I'm still there. I'm thinking about I'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking well, about you're... doing. Listen, here's my idea. This is just in the past couple of days. A one to C two lesson, the yeah. entire thing, everything you need to know. 
from A1 to C2. Maybe like four days. Hang on. Do you mean like the same ago. the same students or different different students? I, mean, I don't know. That, that I got to think about that. Too many <laughs> people coming in and out. Yeah, maybe not for the Guinness Book because I, I saw it. Or maybe you know, you teaching nonstop, but that, that means would you like – you Maybe the yourself. students wouldn't have to be there nonstop. Then, then I can't be in the Guinness Book. The students have to be the same students for that long, and that's not really fair. <laughs> but um, five minute breaks for for four days probably wouldn't work. No, no, not for the Guinness Book. But I could, I could do it and have different groups come in. There should be different groups for A one, A two, B one, B two. You know, you bring in the students for the right level, and then everybody can tune in when they want. If you yeah. want to review the basics. You you start with me when I start. If you want to come, I mean, in, like you you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't sleep at all. Are you crazy? No, I, I think for this it wouldn't be like a marathon. If we're, if I'm really gonna do something like that, I would do it, but it wouldn't have to be the marathon. But it would be like just yeah, each day, go to sleep, come back each day one 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 part of the the framework and yeah, one part of the levels. Hmm. Well, I, I love all these I like all these ideas, man. But like think think about your own health and mental. Health. <laughs> Hey, my own mental health is if I'm not teaching and expending all this energy I've got, then I'm in big trouble. So it's probably good for uh, I see what I see what you no, mean. No. No, but uh, I'm glad you like the idea in principle. Yeah, I'm gonna think about it though. I think I think I think it's it would be pretty cool. Test no, prep, this... especially, man. Test prep is perfect for this because it's really the best test prep online, I feel, is it teaches students back and forth quickly with you know answers, why, boom, 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 right? Um, so yeah. I think that could be really fun. Uh, a lot of people watching, involved. You, ha you have that kind of audience as well, you know, like you can do this, you know, so, so you should yeah. definitely ex experiment with people. it. And... For sure. For sure. Yeah. For sure. yeah man. Okay. Jason, I know, I know you have to go somewhere now. So it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to have you on the podcast and discuss uh, all these things or like how we should learn English and it, sh it should be fun. That, that was, that's our main takeaway, I guess. Yeah. Uh, What you learn with pleasure, you never forget. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so what you don't learn with pleasure you yeah you can <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just tell us... yeah i hope we can do it again um absolutely down, tell us the last the thing like where where can uh um my listeners find you i uh, if you're watching this on you on my youtube channel then uh i've put uh, jason's name at the bottom there but they, so you can, they can always google him yeah. but um what like do you have a website or I do, but I'm I'm one of those people still that uh, is, I mean, you can contact me through my website, but it hasn't been updated in like 10 million years, kind of website. So I mostly it's the social media thing. I'm, yeah. I'm mostly mostly so uh, Instagram, uh, Instagram. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And the only reason I'm not like doing more there, TikTok is something I started. I realized if I really put my heart and soul into it, I could you know do amazing things probably on TikTok just because I I get it, I get it. But I get it so much that I know I'll never do it because it's too much of a job. It's too much of a time commitment to really reach a lot of people there. Uh, but anyway, um, if, if you want to check my videos out, definitely uh, YouTube. If you want to follow what I'm doing, because I do a lot of work in, in uh, offline, which is why I can't really commit to too much online, uh, teaching at uh, two universities in Paris, but also doing shows in schools, which are going to start next week. So uh, once or twice a week until June, I'll be going to a middle school or a high school, sometimes university in Europe. Instagram is best for that. On TikTok, I've made these short videos that I think are, are pretty cool, but um, I haven't really been too active there recently. You can always message me and I'll answer you um, on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, email is fluencymc at gmail. So that's easy too. And yeah. your Instagram handle is fluency underscore MC. I'm right. putting it in just fluency me. MC anything, you'll find yeah. what you want. So whatever your particular, you know, preferences with media. Fantastic. I'm usually, I'm usually there or not far away. Yeah. So so we are looking forward to to your new project, especially, <laughs> so, especially so the stream, especially the streaming idea. That 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 sounds like fun. So uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I've got lots of ideas and then I don't always act on them. But this one to me is seems like maybe it's something worth trying. We'll see. Happens to me all the time, man. We yeah, just, right. <laughs> gotta write them down. Ideas like my brain is like uh, all over the place. And then it's yeah. sometimes difficult to, to follow through as well. That's, you know? that, that's that curse yeah. that comes with being like manically creative. and. Uh, yeah, but... I'm a little bit like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. Okay. Anyway, fantastic right, to have friend. you here. Thanks very thank much. So much. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to reach your listeners. And um, anytime, we'll, man, we'll keep following each other. And I gotta go yeah. check out your rap. 
<laughs> Definitely put that in the description for this. I will. And I will also put, put yours, the Stick Stuck Stuck video. because that's like, Oh, and that's check out Stick 2, the follow-up to Stick Stuck Stuck. Um, stick Stuck go Stuck 2. Yeah, Stick 2. If you go to my uh, YouTube channel that opens sort of by default, you can check yeah, out the, the, more, I, I have, the more recent it, yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, Jason. Take care, yeah, man. Thanks. Take care. You too. Have a good take one. Care. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.